Very good afternoon to everybody and welcome again to the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship race number 25 of our series coming up in just a moment for the ITM Auckland Super Sprint. We've crossed the Tasman and we're 40 kilometres south of this beautiful city and look at that surrounding Auckland Harbour area and the Haraki Gulf, the islands. There's so much to see and do in this wonderful location. Great host this weekend here in Auckland and looking forward to a continuation of the Supercars Championship battle this afternoon. We've already conducted a race. It's all about sprint racing this weekend. Four 100 kilometre races for 35 laps around this racetrack. We'll check out the Virgin Australia Departures Board to get more information about this terrific racetrack that opened back in 1963 and some of the big names that have raced here, Surtees, McLaren, Hill, Stewart, Amon, Maddish, Gardner, McCormick, Brown, some of the biggest names in international motorsport when the old Formula One drivers and Formula 5000 drivers used to run here. But right now, our focus is all about supercar racing. We've been coming here in championship terms for the last 11 years and what a show it turns on this racetrack, particularly that section that we're focusing on at the moment through turns 8, 9, 10 and 11 across the top of the hill. There's a big crowd enjoying all of the action here again this weekend because there's a lot at stake for the Kiwis and one of their men leads our championship. The margin was reduced ever so slightly for Shane Van Gisbergen in the last event. And one of the things that will be curious in this race is whether or not we actually get a little bit of weather. We've been talking about that through the day, but I just came up into the commentary box a few moments ago and it still looks a little as though we might get a shower or two before we're done now. In the last race, in race number 24, this man, Chris Pitha, was involved in an incident. This is a view from Craig Lowndes' car. Looking at Chris Pitha and Jason Bright, you see that Chris catches the curbing on the left-hand side at turn nine, trips that car up, and that was the reason why car number eight got upended. So the view from Lowndes' car actually tells more of the story. And that resolves the question marks in our mind, just a little bit more of the detail there. So you can see that horizon, that's looking generally towards the north. The flags on top of the ITM bridge at the moment are still showing a pretty hefty westerly. That's where the weather's coming from. And it does look a bit ominous. We're just inside the 10 minute mark now. See the flags down there in the lower part of your screen. You can see that there's a bit of intensity in that breeze and one or two drops of rain out now. This happened in race number 24, which was temporarily suspended under red flag conditions as well. We saw some drops of rain at that point. And I, I made the point a little earlier in the Hino Hub that if you do have to come into the pit lane and change tyres, it's a long, long process. 45 seconds in transit plus the stationary time. So you'll have to make a determination, a competitive decision as to whether or not you're going to be advantaged by getting onto a tyre with more grip or do you end up trading off too much in that process. Now, the reason why you saw that information up on screen a moment ago also about the race being declared wet, the race director has to give the call to allow the teams to be able to put the wets on the car. Because if you recall at Winton, I think it was last year, one of the teams, when they were out of contention, one of the Holden Racing Team cars with James Courtney, put wets on to finish a race to preserve the dry weather tyres. And so now that call comes from supercar officials and from CAMS and MANS race control here so that uh, it has to be a universal declaration that you can fit those wets. There are only 12 of them this weekend. Three sets of the Dunlop wet tyres, 24 set, or correction, 24 tyres, not 24 sets, of the Dunlop hard tyre. And it's been very well matched tyre this weekend, Mark Scaife, to the road, because we've seen record-breaking speed. But that might all come undone if we add some H2O. <laughs> well, as you said before, if you want great racing, just add water. And I just walked from the host position to the com box, and it was raining when I was walking over. so. You see the sprinkles and the drops on the front of a couple of the cars that were pulling up on the grid. And it's a bit of a difference in terms of where the weather pattern comes from because, as you said, it's up behind the hill, the spectator mound. It was raining there. And then down on the bottom end, down here, on the front end of the grid there, it's actually quite dry. So changeable conditions, and that's made a big difference this weekend for lap speed. Scafie, as you know, 12 months ago at this very event, there was a breakthrough podium for this guy, Scotty Pye. He was off the fourth row of the grid in the last race, fifth row for this one. How's the car feeling? Yeah, it's certainly a better qualifying car than that, that race car. It was really tough. It's a long way on these tyres on one set. And, uh, yeah, we just we struggled a little bit towards the end of the race, just with some front locking and then rear instability at the very end. But 
I think the cars aren't too bad. I think everyone's probably having similar dramas. You know, you always feel like you're worse than everyone else, but to be honest, it is just a long way on one set of tyres. So the cars aren't too bad. Probably a little bit further back than where you want to be, but we'll have another crack tomorrow and hopefully stick it down the front somewhere. Enjoy. Cheers. Thanks, man. Full concentration aboard the Red Bull race of Jamie Winkup. Just looking at the stuff on the dash there, getting ready for the start, mate. Uh, brilliant start last time. Uh, great win. Any sort of changes made to the, the car? I mean, it looks so fast in the first race. Yeah, obviously the car was good, so we didn't make too many, but um, conditions have changed a fair bit. Bit of, bit of precipitation. Uh, track's cooled. Obviously a little bit more rubber. So um, made a few tweaks. See what happens. Good luck, buddy. Thanks, mate. Cheers. There's always plenty of glitz and glamour on the grid. And Charlotte Cushing, you were crowned the Miss Supercars just recently at the Castrol Gold Coast event. Now, this is your first official event here. How are you enjoying yourself? I'm having an absolute ball, loving every minute. 100% um, a new exper experience for me, so I'm just loving every minute, really. And what's the plan for the rest of the year in your Miss V8 Supercar capacity? Well, look, I'm deciding I wanted to do like a charity thing this year. Um, some really big things are planned, so stay tuned. All right, we look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. One of the legends of the game, Craig Lowndes, had to work very hard in that previous race. You're off 13 for this one, so you've got to do it all again, don't you? Yeah, look, I think it's, uh, you know, the, the first race was the main thing for us is to stay out of trouble. Obviously, starting 21st wasn't ideal, but uh, we made the best of it. And I think, yeah, starting 13th, obviously a lot closer to the front. So get away to a good start and see what happens. You know how to hustle. Uh, yeah, thanks. Much better start position, mate. You can uh, see the guys on the front row. Have you got the car to be able to do anything about uh, these guys up front? Oh, I hope so. It's so tough to pass around here. It's, you know, a couple of high-speed corners. You know, you suffer from a bit of aero push, but we'll give it a crack. Is it uh, to your liking, though? I mean, obviously, you started a bit further back in the first one. Tire life? Yeah, it's tough around here. You know, it's 100 k's on these tyres. is um, It's a long way, but, you know, these boys are very fast. You know, you saw Jamie's lead that he extended in the first one, so hopefully we can go with him. Good luck. Cheers. Man, the stands are full here. They are such a passionate crowd always at Pukekohe. Garth Tandy, you just got the handshake from Alex Somerset. How are you looking? Yeah, all good. We had pretty good pace in that last one. But we're a bit further back in the pack now, so got to try and stay out of trouble. Looked like there was a bit of action back in the pack in that first race. So have a nice, clean first lap and then try and start making our way to the front. All right, got the eyes on. Cool. So you can see that we're keeping a very close eye on this weather at the moment coming from the west and southwesterly zone of this racetrack and if there is a shower or two that will really spice things up because as I said before you have to make decisions to whether or not you want to try and soldier on on the dry tyre if you've got enough warmth in it but there's a point where if you start to sit up on top of the water with the slick tyre the cars become almost uncontrollable that'll force people into the lane and if you come into the lane and somebody decides to stay out and they can manage it in some form then there's a huge difference in time because of the transition through the pit lane. It's a long, long run down the lane there. 45 seconds odd, plus you've got to actually rattle the wheels and tyres on, so that'll be another two or three seconds at least. That's, it. That's if it goes cleanly. And then you've got to deal with the getting them up to temperature as well. So it's an interesting question for us to contemplate. That actually sounded like Fabian Coulthard was a bit despondent yes, about the pace the of the Red Bull cars before. I just wanted to pick up on that. And it made me start to look at you know, what was the margin in the elapsed time between uh, the winners, in this case Van Gisbergen and Jamie Winkup, having put the race win together, and those in, let's call it non Triple Eight land, non Red Bull land. But uh, yeah, so there's a fair gap when you look at his race, for example. He ended up the best part of about 20 odd seconds or more behind, and that'll be one of the reasons why he's a bit frustrated because that's a pretty substantial gap in a sprint race. In a 35 lap race, yeah. exactly. And there's Winkup, and what a start it was for him. In the previous race minimize the wheel spin it's the clean side of the road we didn't explain that for you when we saw the start in race 24 so he's on the normal racing line so that side of the road is slightly better in terms of being clean and look at the new zealanders they just love this place it's steeped in tradition we've had some of the world's best drivers here from the 60s tasman series the new zealand grand prix and the jason richards trophy is a big one in terms of commemorating one of the really great guys of our industry. Jason Bright was the winner in 2013. Mark Winterbottoms won the trophy. Jamie Wincup got it done last year. Kiwis have not yet claimed that one. But, uh, it was a lovely tribute that I saw earlier in the day in response to our old friend Jason Richards. We lost him on December the 15th, 2011. It was a very sad day for the industry fitting memorial for him with this trophy that's been put up by supercars. 
That's the front row of the grid. It's Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Wincup once again. Fifth pole of 2016 for Shane Van Gisbergen and moved his career tally on to 14, so he didn't sit still at 13 for terribly long. Let's have a look at our Race 25 Supercars starting grid. So it's an all Red Bull lockout on row number one, Van Gisbergen and Wincup. Wincup having won that last race. Then Mostert and Coulthard. So Falcons on row number two. They're certainly in a better position to throw a punch this time. Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom on the third row of the grid from Caruso and McLaughlin. Scotty is continuing to experiment with a few little changes on that car to try and spark it up. Then Pye and Reynolds on the next row of the grid. For the back positions, 11 and 12, Cam Waters and Todd Kelly had some steering damage on that car in the last event. For Todd, then Craig Lowndes, followed by Rick Kelly, Garth Pander and James Courtney, those Holden Racing Team cars absolutely chained together this weekend. Jason Bright and Dale Wood. Now, Brighty's car is in a very sad state, so disregard the graphic. They're still working on that car, and they will be well into the evening, and it'll be a real job to even turn it around and get it here tomorrow. The damage is just massive. I crawl all over it. Andre Heimgarten and Chris Pidler. Sadly for Chris, pit lane drive-through penalty in that last race after the problem at Turn 9. Shay Davies and Tim Slade in a tough weekend for Brad Jones Racing because Tim had some damage to recover from as well. So he's up the back of the grid. So here's the field coming into position. So when you look in the other direction, that's up towards the northeast, blue sky there. Yeah. And that's been the pattern of the week so far. So yesterday we started practice with a wet track and then it quickly dried. Depending on where you look at the moment and where you stand, you may well get wet. There's the situation for this race. 25 runners, 100 kilometres. 35 laps the journey that's looking to the south and southwest and that's generally where a bit of the weather's been coming from great view of the grandstand here remember that this location uh, shared sporting activity with horse racing over many years as well we came back here in 2013 having been further south down at hamilton passionate crowd let's join them i've come over here to the grandstand and these guys they have absolutely packed out these stands new zealand fans they love their motorsport and they love their supercars. One of their fan, one of their favourite drivers is starting from pole position. The other one is starting from the second row of the grid. We've got the king in our commentary team. Can one of the New Zealand boys stand on the top step of the podium this afternoon? Let's find out. Thank you, Rihanna Crean. Together with Greg Rust and Greg Murphy up on the hill in the pit lane and the pit paddock. There's been quite a bit to report on in this gap between races 24 and 5 with the damage. Big repairs going on with car number 34 for James Moffat, with car number 7 for Todd Kelly, with car number 96 for Dale Wood, and also car number 8. And that's what it's all about for the Kiwis. It's all about the gears. And he's in a prime position. Can he convert this afternoon? If there's a drop or two of rain, that may help his cause. We're set to go racing for the second time today in New Zealand. Race number 25. On the pole position, Van Gisbergen. On the clean line is Wind Cup. Light changes, they drop the clutch. This time, Wind Cup gets a little sideways. It's not as clear cut, but watch for Mostert. He tries to make it three wide, he couldn't do it. Coulthard runs with him, and it's a real battle between the Red Bull teammates and Van Gisbergen prevails this time. He's one up on Wind Cup, and he cleanly enters the back straight with Mostert up into third position, and then Coulthard tucked behind. Winterbottom's got off to a good start as well. Beautiful start there by Van Gisbergen. And Jamie Winkup turned it to the right very hard. He actually engaged his own wheel spin by turning it so aggressively to the right. So Van Gisbergen from Winkup mossed it. Right in behind there is Pye, who made a great start. Sorry, Fabian Coulthard made a great start. And Winterbottom, down the inside goes Winkup. Can he get it done? They make a little bit of contact. Now they run around here in the fast left-hander. This is where Jason Bright went off. Wow, this is on. Wind Cup's got supreme cold tyre speed. He showed it in the previous race. Listen to the crowd. They are loving it. Their man's come round at the end of the first lap and he hung on by his fingernails because his teammate Wind Cup tried to wrestle that lead from him through turn eight. So he's definitely stronger on cold tyres at the moment with the setup that he's got. He's all over the back of Van Gisbergen at turn four. And he's on the throttle hard on the exit, so watch for the move at the end of the back straight. Wincup's got a very, very good exit here. He's right in the draft. Can he convert? Watch for the gap to open. Kizzy covers. They're racing hard. They're painted the same. They're from the same show, but it means a lot to them. There's a championship at stake. 
and Mostert's in the party as well. Yeah, Mostert has lost no ground, has he? He's done a great job in the early stages. Neither has Fabian Coulthard. Down the inside he goes this time. Wink up with a great move. He comes for a car like the half back, and he hangs in. Now, what happens here? Can Van Gisbergen stay around the outside? He just gives the throttle a breath. No! He gets up the inside again. That is a great exchange. Unbelievable motor racing between the Red Bull teammates, but they're gifting metres to Mostert. They're giving Mostert the incentive. They're hurting each other at the moment. Van Gisbergen down the inside. Wrestles back the lead. Wind Cup is exposed at three. Mostert's all over it. Coulthard's in there. Winterbottom's in there. What a race. That is as good as it gets. That's an, an exchange that you should never forget. That is so fast, and Van Gisbergen and Winkup, perfectly executed, great race craft, fantastic racing. Van Gisbergen's having trouble in the low speed corners. The way he's got the car set, he's not able to pull it up with the same degree of authority that Winkup can. So Jamie can get in deep into the hairpin, carry more speed. This time Shane knows that extra car length that he's got has protected him. He didn't cover as much. When he gets back on the racing line, he will be faster. When you cover, you're slower. They very nearly gifted positions then to Chas Mostert. And you can be assured that in the background, Roland Dane will be watching with hawk eyes at the moment. That exchange, we're looking now at the two Red Bull cars from Mostert. That exchange through turn eight, nine, 10, 11, over the hill and into turn one, was as good as you will ever see. And it was, it's so fast. What you said before is he actually, at that stage, he actually gave Mostert a chance. That was a beautiful start by Van Gisbergen that time. Oh, Great lounge down the grass. Now watch what happens here. He turns it too hard to the right, Jamie. He made a great jump, and he got too much wheel spin by turning it too hard. How about Mostert? He made the best start of the lot. He goes around the outside. And he thought better of the notion of being in the gray. Here he is, look at him. He's right out on the wide line there, but there's absolutely no grip out there for Chaz, and he tucks it down because his next problem was Coulthard, who was lurking right behind in the MAN Falcon. Look at this battle down at three and four. We're riding with Scotty McLaughlin, a little bit of contact between Davison and Winterbottom. And Frosty prevailed in that exchange, and this was just supreme. Great positioning of the cars by both drivers, and a little bit of contact on the exit. Wind Cup was so strong down there on cold tyres at the hairpin and it went on and on and on this battle looking at the replay from another angle how they managed to get through here and do it cleanly and not end up fencing each other crowd loving it so are we but all the time for Chas Mostert and for Fabian Coulthard it was bonus time and that allowed the two Ford drivers to be right in the party back live. Van Gisbergen's got half a second on Jamie Wincup. So the Wincup advantage was evident on the cold tyres. That could be set up, but it could also be driver. It might have just been to his liking. He knew, Jamie, that that was the opportunity to be able to do the damage. He tried to capitalise on the first couple of laps on tyres that were under pressure and hadn't come up to temperature. And we're riding now with David Reynolds, who's currently in eighth position behind Scotty McLaughlin. He's got Michael Caruso behind him. It does look like now Van Gisbergen with a real turn of pace. Fastest lap of the race on that lap for Shane. 3.91 plays a 4.15, so two tenths of a second gain there for Van Gisbergen over Winkup. That's it. Shane stays off that curbing on the exit at four. It's a quick corner than it looks on paper and even when you walk the track it's 95 kilometers an hour in second gear at the slowest point in the apex and getting a clean exit and getting that throttle advanced without bursting into wheel spin and sliding and getting up on that sawtooth curve is important we're riding with Chaz Mostert we're tucked in behind Jamie Wincup there's Coulthard Winterbottom Davison McLaughlin Reynolds Caruso High then Rick Kelly up the inside Tander on waters job done he had to slide it Todd Kelly's having a battle with Cam Waters here as well. That puts Todd on the outside. If you can stay there, you can make it stick, but staying there is easier to say than do. He's done it. Right, so Todd prevails. There's a little bit of contact between them into the final corner. And Moffat's here as well. We're riding now with James, having a look up the inside on the run to one. 
That was a very nice manoeuvre by Todd Kelly. Very hard to do. We saw Van Gisbergen do it a couple of laps earlier, but beautifully done. Great execution, great race craft. Great respect by both parties to give them racing room required to get those cars through there. That's over 200 kilometres an hour. Very narrow, very bumpy. And Moffat's going to have a look here also. He went off the road down here in the previous race. And it's easy to trip over the curbs here and then buy into another problem. That's what happened to Chris Pither in the earlier race. So you bounce off the curbs here and you use the meterage along the way. This is what could have happened to Cam Waters. And he look at him sliding, bouncing up on two wheels, but it didn't flick into the Nissan. Then he had to tuck it down. He wanted to try and close that gap because James Moffat would have pounced and got the spot through the exit of turn 11 in the final corner. Here we are on board with James Moffat. Bird's eye view of the action. Look how close those two are. Oh. And look how hard Waters has had to slide that car down to the right to cover. And then covered again on the run into one. Here's the gap. 0.6 it is officially between Van Gisbergen and Wink Cup. And then Chas Mostert still position three from Coulthard. Here's the rest of the field for you. We're picking up on Lee Holdsworth. It's a tough qualifying for him. He's down in 20th position in the Preston Higher entry. Back to the lead already. Those guys are 11 seconds from the lead. And Wink Cup is now coming back at him a little bit. It's back to 0.6 as you said. But it was two or three car lengths wider in terms of that gap only a little while ago. Wick up speed was just fantastic in the first race. So now as things start to settle down, lap 8 of 35, just seeing now what the genuine car speed's like. McLaughlin was complaining. I spoke to him, Richard Holway, between the races. He just didn't quite have the grip level and the balance consistency. You spoke about it earlier. When the cars are good in the fast stuff, they're often not good in the slower stuff. And he was really grappling with what changes could be made, especially with usually more grip. Settling down is a relative term when you make that remark, isn't it? Because this is a racetrack where there is virtually no settle. There's very little rest time here. Uh, there's a little bit of it down what we call the back straight, but even what we describe as the front straight isn't because you're so busy sliding the car off the final corner and then trying to aim up into the bumps at one. All of the pitch and roll and the amount of sliding that the cars do makes it exciting even if there's just one car out there. But you're right, it has just for the moment taken a breath. <laughs> just a breath. <laughs> While things settle down, half a second between Van Gisbergen and Winkup, it hasn't settled back here. These guys are still on for it. And it is Percat. Lowndes, Tim Blanchard, Lee Holdsworth. These fellas are battling for 17, 18, 19 and 20. Percat was blocking pretty hard then. On the way out of turn 7 down to turn 8. He knew that Lowndes had a run on him. So Van Gisberg and Winkup, Boston, Coulthard, Winterbottom, Davison, McLaughlin, Reynolds, Caruso, Pye, Rick Kelly, James Courtney, Garth Tander, Todd Kelly, Cam Waters, Moffat. That's down to the top 16. That's John McGregor, and he's the engineer on Craig Lowndes' car. Controversial news this week with Ludo Lacroix, long-term head of engineering for Triple Eight. He's been with Roland Dane for 17 years, and Ludo has announced with DJR Team Penske that he's not only leaving Triple Eight, but he's joining the Penske organization. And for this weekend, Young Irish, which is his nickname, John McGregor. He's looking after the car with Ken Douglas, who's a very experienced engineer alongside him. And he was actually part of the Russell Engel, Marcus Ambrose, Stone Brothers days. Ken, we see typically coming back into the paddock for the endurance races, and he is very good on strategy. But it's interesting that they've retained his services to stay with the team now in sprint racing form as well, just to beef up the engineering side. So they'll attempt to flatten their structure a little bit at Triple Eight Race Engineering now as well and be less individual centric and uh, try and spread the load across younger engineers and the announcement also during the week from Triple Eight that uh, former Formula One engineer Sam Michael will be joining in a mentoring and consulting basis uh, in the engineering group having spent a lot of time at Williams and McLaren Lanley as the sporting director and he'll dramatically strengthen them particularly as they start to prepare for the engineering procedure that brings the new car 
in for General Motors for Holden, so the, the new version of the Holden Commodore when it comes along, that'll be a very big project that they've already started work on. So looking at the battle now between the Holden Racing teammates again, James Courtney and Garth Panda, these fellas at the moment are 12th and 13th, they're chasing Rick Kelly in the midfield. Panda just sliding up to the top of the hill on that lap. And they are about 10 seconds from the lead at the moment. That gap first to second has stayed absolutely static. It's jammed at six tenths of a second at the moment. And Mostert is still within a second of Wind Cup. So they've definitely made improvements with car number 55 as we jump on board the Volvo now. And we'll get up to 250 plus kilometres an hour. Finds 255 ever so briefly. Scott McLaughlin looking at the back of Will Davison. Scott is in seventh. Love the sound of the Volvo and listen to the gentle throttle progression. Here he is back to first out of eight. And that's a considered position. Using the throttle that way, that's all about the way in which Scott advances the throttle to preserve the rear tyres. Because the tyres were hurting a bit late in our first race today. High speed through one, 190 odd kilometres an hour. Mid-quarter speed got down into the high 80s there at turn four. So these are little adjustments that Scott's making to the percentage of brake bias. You can alter the amount of brake front to rear as a relative percentage. Very hungry with the way in which he loads the front tyre and very patient with his throttle application. So he maximises the load, gets right to the very grip edge of the front tyre, waits till he gets to or past the apex, and then that throttle progression there for him went all the way out of the hairpin for probably the best part of 75 to 100 metres until he could eventually get it to 100%. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, the camera rotation of the camera. Oh, my but, God, um, we're in the maybe you hold my breath, because uh, <laughs> if that were from the driver's seat, when you and I have seen those pictures in the past, it's time to let go of the wheel and just pray. <laughs> I thought it was going in the fence. Our director just said sorry, because yeah. we, were, we were holding our breath. We thought, oh, we're on board for a crash. We get a bit engrossed in this. There's a bit of virtual driving goes on in the commentary box. So sorry, we just had our own little shunt then. <laughs> <laughs> It does show you how energised they are around here in, in these cars on this racetrack. They push so hard to every last little millimetre. And over the top of the hill, yeah, the commitment's mega. Gut panned it, turn six. A little bit more sliding in evidence. Second gear for him coming out of six than we saw with McLaughlin. He's only feeding it back to second here as well. In the traffic in the opening lap, they use first. And when they've got good tyre quality, they'll fire it out in first. But preserving the rear tyres is a bit of an important issue. So the reason why they use the slightly higher gear is you effectively breed your own traction control then. So with more than 600 horsepower, the low gear just creates wheel spin, tyre temperature and a total lap of grip. All right, welcome to your watching on now on board. Uh, the number two, isn't it? Yes, it is. Number two, Gartana, just uh, behind the team. These boys have reversed themselves, but they won't leave e each other alone this weekend, although I'm sure you would have preferred they were back inside the top ten. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, we didn't get the best out of our second quality. Probably took a step in the wrong direction, which we thought would have worked for us, and it didn't. So we had a good first quality. Second quality didn't work out too well. So, yeah, it'd be nice if we were a little bit further at the front, but we know the car can get there. and It's got the speed. We just didn't get the best out of it. They're playing nicely at the moment, though. Uh, they always play nicely. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> The gap's been fluctuating between 2.5, 2.7 seconds to the lead for Chas Moss. I thought I'd get a quick word with you, Tim Edwards. So, uh, difficult first race for him, but the car's been pretty strong here for Chas at the moment. Yeah, well, he made a little mistake in the first race, but he had good car speed. You know, once he had clear track, unfortunately, he was in last position at that point. So, no, he was reasonably happy with the car. I mean, they're all struggling, struggling a little bit with understeer, and we, we try to tune him up. Do you think as the race goes on, he'll have a little something that maybe can get him closer to those two in front? Uh, Unfortunately, I don't think we've got their pace. You know, I think, you know, I think, unfortunately, I think the best we can hope for is third. You know, that's about our car speed at the moment. We're frosty in chassis. You know, that's kind of our car pace. So we've got a bit of work to do. Let you get back to it. Thanks. Barry Rogers, no doubt this weekend there is always a little bit of a, 
an under the card sort of battle to be the top dog Kiwi this weekend. But it's great to have Scotty on the podium in the previous race, but doesn't quite have the pace to run up with the uh, the, the front runners. That's right. Yeah, probably qualifying when you qualify. Not the date, the bad qualifying uh, result, but when uh, around here you sort of need to be in that sort of top handful and. Uh, probably um, in, in there behind Will and uh, I think there's a bit of follow the leader there so uh, the 100k races like they're good races but they're sort of half preserving the tyres to sort of get to the last 10 or 15 laps so uh, we'll set up over the last little bit but push on from there. Yep. Right. A tenth of a second uh, has been peeled out of the gap between Van Gisbergen and Wind Cup it's back down to 0.5 now and every little bit counts jumping back on board with Garth Tander over the top of the final corner he's still in 12th spot <laughs> He's actually jumped. Oh, he's jumped James Courtney. He didn't spot that. So uh, James was sliding around one of the images that I saw earlier. Uh, so that's good pace from Tanda. He snuck down the inside of turn eight. He had a big dive on uh, James. And on board now with James Moffat. Moffat is right there with Cam Waters. Oh, he's got the wheels locked. He gets down there. That was a bold move by Moffat. When the engine turns off like that, you always know that you're in a bit of strife, but he got that done, and that's the move. Similar, similar way. Did he give him a bump on the way in, though? I, I don't know. I didn't see. Did he make contact with him? I'm not sure. Though. It was more of a rhetorical question than a statement. I just wasn't sure whether or not he actually got into the back of it. Here's the move that you noted with Garth Tander, and James made it easy, so he, he gave him the space. But see how he used first gear and then when he put it into second it still was wheel spinning even in second gear off that corner it's not as nice on the loaded front for mark winterbottom as a couple of the other cars out there at the moment is it so it just looks harsh in the way in which it rides over there so he's tucked in behind fabian coulthard fabian's now lost a bit of ground to Chaz. Chaz has scooted away so you can just see glimpses of him off in the distance on the run to five and we've been looking in practice at Mark Winterbottom's car. Their pace is better this weekend, but as you just said, it rides the bump quite nicely. A lot of wheel spin there for Frosty coming out of turn six. But it, and listen for this, wheel spin, first gear. Yeah, so a lot of the guys now using second, Frosty still using first. But it rides this bump really nicely, it really interests me. It rides that bump really nicely. It doesn't ride the bump at turn one very nicely. So although they're different styles of bumps, normally if you've got a car that rides the bump at turn 10 well, it's better at the other one. Here's Lowndes around the outside of Perkett. They've been battling the whole time. That's very close. Wow, if Perkett bumps Lowndes then, you have a giant accident. That was great driving. Tight. Very tight. Craig Lowndes moves up in the 17th position and uh, just watch this on the replay so cam waters in the foreground in the monster car nick Perkat on the inside in the adelaide holden commodore and the vortex car is lounge and it's millimeters between them at the critical moment of turning and when you hook up over that curve as i said earlier in the call then that can be catastrophic and i'm looking at wind cup on our computer timing scope and he's showing that he went through the shortcut at the end of the back straight in his pursuit of Shane Van Gisbergen and the margin's gone out from 0.5 to 1.7. So we just caught a shot of him there a few moments ago, but he's gone straight ahead. So when they've done that a couple of times, they get a warning. It happened to Todd Kelly with that steering damage in the previous race. Tanner's made a move on Rick Kelly now. Looks like he did that in the same spot as the pass on his teammate. Todd Kelly's coming on quite strong in terms of pace. He was a long way behind his brother few laps ago now this is the moment there it is so he was only about half a second away that's on board with wink up in fact i reckon he got closer at that point so he was deeply incentivized to try and get rid of that margin here it is from the other angle and uh, jamie's got the rear brakes chirping in the end he's decided better not to tour the grass stay on the black stuff take the pain of the chicane it's a little bit of poetry and then uh, pop out the other side <laughs> well, it's way, a way better option than ending up on the grass. There's Tanda, and uh, Rick gives him a helping hand, and James, in turn, is helping Rick get off the corner as well. So, sorry, I called that wrong. The pass was into turn five for Tanda. So he didn't get him at turn eight. We're on board now with Michael Caruso. Caruso's in ninth. 
in a pretty steady race. He's been behind Dave Reynolds the whole way. They've got reasonably good car pace. Flowing the car quite nicely. He's the lead Nissan. Van Gisbergen with that mistake from Wink Cup now has a 2.3 second lead. A couple of other drivers have run wide down at turn five as well. Tim Slade, Shay Davies just went straight ahead down there. So a few people having a bit of a battle as the tyre condition drops off now. Grip's not what it was. This is the spot we're talking about. Michael just makes sure that he's got brake pressure. Brings those pads up to the disc face so that he's got a good solid pedal on the way in there. James Courtney's having a little bit of a battle stopping car number 22 nicely there as well. And here we are finding Craig Lowndes again, car triple A team Vortex, tucked in behind Cam Waters in the Monster Energy Ford Falcon. Right on him. He'll have a look up the inside here at eight, and he does. He's gone down the inside. Cam's given him some space. That's a move for position number 16 for Craig Lowndes. James Bomber's done a good job too. He's gained seven positions. So Tanda up four spots. Courtney up three. Great job. Moffat up seven. Now it's okay. John McGregor with his Irish accent. Talking to Craig. That was a nice pass that he put on young Cam Waters down to turn eight. accustomed with the sounds of the United Nations <laughs> this year. We'll be able to sort all the languages out. Frenchman Ludo Lacroix. Yep. Now the Irishman of McGregor. In fact, he's had four engineering changes in the last yeah. what, three to four years with Jeremy Moore and Grant McPherson, Ludo and John. So there's, there's actually been a, quite a lot of change in terms of Craig Lowndes getting that rapport with his engineer. Showing you where your favourite driver is in the field there. As we go back to car number 17, Scott Pye's got pressure now from Garth Tander. Tander's on the march, so his tyre preservation is good. Car setup's obviously looking after it. He's pressing on. His race pace all year has been good, but it wasn't until they changed chassis at a point in the year where all of a sudden he got his qualifying mojo back as well. And again, we've noticed that this weekend on fire with a great performance at Sandown at the 500 with a win and then he was right in the mix at Bathurst until the disaster on lap 150 and in the mix again in the controversial circumstances on the Gold Coast. Rihanna? Nice story. Both your cars been in and around the 10 for qualifying and the races but Scott Pye's found a pretty hard and fast uh, charging Garth Tander at the moment. Indeed he has. I think both cars at the moment are struggling a little bit with rear tyre. We're just trying to find the balance between front and rear brakes at the moment. And uh, look, with, I think Fabian's doing a good job of keeping uh, Frosty behind. And uh, he's going to juggle a bit, little bit come uh, later on in the race. But uh, Scotty's certainly got a fast charging car behind him. We'll, we'll do the right thing and, uh, and try and get the best result we can. All right, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, cheers. Another of the birthdays here in pit lane today is Barry Ryan from Erebus. We've got a drama here for James Courtney. We'll come back. I'll have a word with Betty Clemenko in a second, guys. It doesn't look good for James, whatever's going on here. Is it just a guard rub on the tyre or is it something more sinister with power steering or an engine drama? No doubt we'll hear some radio chatter or from the garages at the Holden Racing Team. But a pretty substantial amount of smoke there with that car neck. At the moment, James is in 13th position behind Raquel in front of Todd. Was very close to Rick Kelly before. I'm not sure whether there was any contact in that exchange. Neil, he's dropped off from Rick Kelly. Now that gap, which was 2.9 a couple of laps ago, has come back to 1.9. So Wink Cup starting to make some ground on Van Gisbergen. Austin Coulthard and Winterbottom are in a different league. That battle with McLaughlin and Davison has raged from lap one. Tander, as you can see there in 11th position, catching Scott Pye. As you said, through the course of the year, Tander's race pace has been very good. His qualifying performances have been less than optimal for Holden Racing Team. Rusty? Just thought I'd catch up with team owner Betty Clemenko because this Penrite Commodore from the moment practice started on Friday was fast and David's running in the top eight at the moment. You must be happy. I am. It's all, it's all fitting together. The car's fitting together with the driver and the driver's fitting together with a new engineer and everyone's happy. Good stuff. I'll let you enjoy. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. 
Scotty Sinclair, uh, hey mate, uh, you must be a little bit happier now that you uh, haven't got all your cars bashing into each other, well, some of them, uh, and uh, your, your heart's probably not beating quite as fast this time around. It's not as entertaining, though, for us. No, yeah, bad for you guys, good for me, but uh, no, we, uh, we dealt with that, we we'll move on, and, uh, you know, new race, this one, and the guys are going all right, not great, but a bit of a result of a qualifying, so... Yeah, what about the, the tyre quality? Everyone's talking about, obviously, the, the length of these races, no pit stops. How's everybody feeling with the, the, the quality of their tyre? Yeah, the tyres weren't were hanging in there all right. It was actually the track, I don't know. Just the, I'm listening to the other cars as well. A lot of people talking about just to being a bit on top of the road. So we're probably suffering the same thing. So as the track's heated up, it's, uh, it's maybe dealt us uh, a bit in the wrong direction, but uh, we'll have a think for tomorrow. Thanks, bud. Ta. Scotty Sinclair there from Nissan Motorsport. We're looking at Rick Kelly in the Sinclair Nissan Altima. And uh, Rick's currently in 12th and uh, straight ahead. Whoa, well, he just barely stopped it, didn't he, Garth Panda? So that's a bit of a shame given that uh, he's been showing excellent pace and that's been costly for him. So Shane Van Gisberg at two seconds the margin over Jamie Wincup. And here he is. So we've got 10 laps remaining, potentially staring at the possibility of win number seven for him for 2016. Interesting when you look across the Triple Eight as a group, both Red Bull cars and the Team Vortex car, uh, to this point, 12 victories. Everybody else is in the twos from Brad Jones, Gary Rogers, Holt Racing Team, Techno. That's a pretty emphatic pace. Look at this, Lounds up on the outside here with Todd. And this is going to be close. Again, it's just millimetres. So there's a bit of roulette being played out there at the moment. Fairly high degree of cooperation required by both parties to make that work. A lot of experience across both those drivers. And they both live to fight another day, but that made us pucker. Well, Lowndes, he relied on Todd Kelly backing out of that. He actually moved across on him, and he relied on Todd Kelly participating in that manoeuvre. If Todd stays where he is and doesn't go over the curve as aggressively and doesn't tuck the car in, they make contact, and as I said before, you have a giant crash there. It's so fast. And a little punch drunk from the first one, no doubt. Todd Kelly doesn't want any more damage, had steering problems after the contact in that last race. Took a bit of resurrecting that car, and I spoke to him down on the pit apron for a while. So he's got good pace at the moment in 16th position behind Lowndes, who continues his march. But just in terms of total podiums, Scapey, and uh, so far to this point in the, the year, we've had, uh, what, 72 of them or something. Uh, Triple Eight have had more than 30 as a, as a total. That's a, that's a lot. They've, they've found something, particularly in this middle to back end phase of the championship season. They've just moved the marker a, a little bit again. And it, really, there was an air of resignation with Tim Edwards in that interview a little bit earlier. That, yeah, we're just, I think we're going to be best for the rest. We've just got to keep working on it, try and figure out what the, what we need to do to unlock a bit more pace. They've definitely stepped another margin, haven't they? Well, and I think there's two things. I questioned at the start of the year, there's Shane Van Gisbergen's dad looking on. I questioned at the start of the year where Red Bull or Triple Eight could run three cars. The answer to that is absolutely they can. They've done a superb job. I think the thing that has been really evident is that this continual rivalry and competition between Van Gisbergen and Wink Cup, that level of intensity has actually improved both drivers and both cars. And when you said they found something, I think when both guys are trying to beat each other like that, we've seen it through the course of history. It's been lots of times in our sport way back, even when Holden Dealer Team days or Moffat days, when you've got two drivers continuing to want to improve the car and beat each other. Oh, and wink up again, squirming the car under brakes. Only just makes turn five. But when you're doing that, you're continuing to get a yield. The team gets a better performance from both drivers and the car improves. Yeah, even when I was looking at my tallies there, that was coming into the weekend. So in terms of wins, it's actually even one up on that when you go across the board, win cup, Van Gisbergen, and Lowndes, makes it 13. 34 team podiums for Triple Eight. Next closest is Gary Rogers and Pro Drive with seven each. So uh, that's right, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Because we were all wondering about that. Sometimes a third car just spoils the party and tips a place over. That, that didn't happen in this instance. We're riding now with Mark Winterbottom. Tim Slade's gone straight through again at the end of the back straight. Crossed is in fifth. He's 10 seconds from the lead. 
and he's sandwiched between Fabian Coulthard and Will Davis, and that's Fabian in the foreground in the MAN Ford Falcon. In terms of following your favourite driver, Dave Reynolds has gained two spots. Garth Tander has gained four spots. Rick Kelly, two positions. James Courtney up three. And James Moffat has been the man of the match so far. He's gained eight positions. Craig Lowndes has lost a couple. So has Todd Kelly. So has Cam Waters. And the bad sportsmanship flag will be shown to Tim Slade for short, short cutting at the end of the back straight down there at turn five. So he's been through there a couple of times now. It's getting a little bit closer, isn't he, Frosty? He is. It's been better this weekend. Their pace is better, isn't it? Carl looks better. As I said before, it rides this bump really nicely. But it doesn't ride the, the other one. I just can't work that one out at turn one. Year on year, and uh, we did it in the Hino Hub earlier, you know, having come here since 2001, and then there was the, the gap when we went to Hamilton. But we used to look at the cars and the way they rode that bump uh, between the last two corners and hold our breath every single lap. And even in, as drivers, you come back and you have this wide-eyed description of what was going on out there. That's all come down. Because the engineering is so clever in these cars, the people that work on them 24-7, 365, make them better year in and year out. And the whole standard of the field's come up so dramatically. What was once a pretty significant bump down there that used to make everybody frightened with white knuckle fever has all calmed down. I don't think I've ever seen the collective of the field look as under control in that section of the racetrack. Totally agree. Absolutely. And I think in the modern generation car with independent rear suspension, less unsprung weight, lots of dynamic changes that have been made to the car that now that people are tuning these things really well they ride that bump beautifully conversely i reckon when you watch the front of the car and that great shot we've had the slow-mo shot of turn one i think they actually look like they're more upset at turn one they really move around a lot it's a different style of bump that's the bump you're talking about there the cars do ride them really nicely tandon now has made all that gap that ground that he lost when he made the mistake this one here, check this out now. It's the bump on the inside, and when, exactly, see the way that it rides it? The wheels come off the ground and then bounce back down again. And then the cars take a bite of the road, so they move in meterage across the road to the outside as they, let, they go through the bump cycle, then the rebound cycle. See how everything's unweighted now? The whole car's in its rebound cycle. It's fully extended on the dampers, and then they, they move across the track and then bottom out again, and the oscillations continue after the car lands. And that hurts the tyre. The more that you pound the wall of the tyre, the more the tyre hates it, makes heat, uh, and the tyre is an unsprung, un undamped device. And here comes Tander, who's making big ground on pie. He's been threatening to do this in the last several laps, and he's shot down the inside and grabbed him. Remember, the Tander went straight ahead at the end of the back straight. And Pye's not going to give this one away quickly. Oh, and Tander just lifted out of it and gave him back the spot. And there's probably a recollection of what happened a couple of weeks ago that he doesn't want to be involved in any more controversy. Neither of these groups want any more damage. So good decision. Both drivers racing cleanly and hard through there. Rick Kelly's riding this as well. So... Garth can't afford to leave any open spaces. Oh, look, he's got a great exit off four, and he's well positioned here. Look what a couple of kilometres an hour does. Corner exit speed converts to more speed at the end of the straight. I'd love 10 bucks for every time somebody tells me it's more horsepower. It's got more to do with corner exit than anything else. Oh, and look at this. Great exchange between them. Tander slithered through five, managed to cover. Rick Kelly is right here as well in the background. Watch him to dive down at eight. But Pi covers. And here comes Courtney, because Rick is exposed up on the outside of the track. But James stuck it back in first gear and slipped it out the other side, left Lickery straps. He couldn't convert the power. That was a great exchange. It's for 10th position, Garth Tander. That was a really good exchange with Scott Pi. Fantastic stuff. And a great braking manoeuvre in the end. He got a really good run out of turn four. And as you said, he got not only a better exit, but a little bit of draft, a little side draft that was able to just have a little bit of momentum. And when we're on lap 34 of 35 now, Van Gisbergen with a 2.4 second lead over Wink Cup has done a beautiful job in race 25. Locals are going to love this one. Jason Richards trophy points update, bottom left-hand corner of screen. Remember also that Van Gisbergen was the winner of the Pertec Enduro Cup. 
got the championship lead. He lost a few points in the last race. That's his dad, Robert. He's got to do a little less than three kilometres now. And you're going to hear a big roar from this crowd in the background, What's particularly on the hill. On What's my dad doing on TV? <laughs> Don't worry, Shane, it's all about you now, mate. You've got half a lap to go, soak it up. <laughs> so he's looking at the big screen. <laughs> Clearly a relaxed driver out there at the moment. Managing those upshifts very cleanly. He's got a margin of 2.3 seconds. That's funny. <laughs> Over Jamie Wincup. <laughs> Chaz Mostert in position number three. So Holden, Holden, Ford, one, two, and three. He's only got to negotiate TV, TV. mate. <laughs> but first, he just said he'd, you're watching TV. So I think they're a bit relaxed down there at the moment. This has been a great display by Shane Van Gisbergen. <laughs> it was a tremendous performance for him on the Gold Coast. His pace was extraordinary. Listen to the crowd. The Kiwis love it. Shane Van Gisbergen is the winner of race number 25. 75 points. Great drive. He gets home by just over two seconds from Jamie Wincup. And it's still going on further down the order here. Pye, Rick Kelly, and James Courtney in behind. So well done, uh, no, Shane no, Van no, Gisbergen. No, so Gizzy, Wincup, Mostert, Coulthard, Winterbottom, Davison, McLaughlin, Reynolds, Caruso, Tander. That is your 10. This man, he's the man of the moment. It'll be a hallmark weekend because he came into the weekend on 297 races. He's going to click up 300 this like weekend. That. He's had a couple of poles for Armour All. He's now converted to a win. There's his engineer, Grant McPherson. They managed to do comedy in the last lap of the race. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What's my dad doing on TV? <laughs> that could be the quote of the year. <laughs> and that's Van Gisbergen's seventh win of the year. So it's been a great championship. It's been a couple of mistakes. It's been a couple of controversial finishes. Remember in Tasmania when he went off the road with only a couple of laps to go that cost him 150 points. He had a weird restart battle with Michael Caruso and he lost basically 100 points in Darwin. But it's been a beautiful championship for Shane and he stops out the front with the New Zealand crowd cheering him on. And he's been the master. He does the drifting. He's the master of the burnout. I hope he didn't want those tyres. I think they're over. Had an extraordinary run podiums. Came into the weekend here with nine podiums from the last 11 races. That's an incredible run of consistency and pace. And his performance in the Pertec Enduro Cup was astonishing at Sandown, at Bathurst, and then at the Gold Coast. The rear tyres are shot. All the boys can't work out where the podium is. Yeah. He's got to clear the smoke. <laughs> Most is just creeping down there at walking pace, trying to find the... <laughs> The Virgin Australia victory lane. There it is. <laughs> it is uh, bang. Great drive, Shane Van Gisbergen. Well done. 75 points, not the normal number of points distributed for a win because we've got four sprint races this weekend. It was 150 points in total today, a further 150 tomorrow for another 300 point weekend. Well done, Shane Van Gisbergen. Converted from pole, great start. The battle that he found himself in in the opening couple of laps on cold tyres with Jamie Wincup was world-class motorsport, as good as it gets. Two masters at work, a couple of great cars, and a popular win for the locals. And look at the load. These super slow-mo images just blow us away down there at turn one. The car's got no ride height on the outside. We'll hear from them shortly. Let's go to Rihanna. Shane Van Gisbergen, welcome back to the Virgin Australia Victory Lane. A popular win here in New Zealand. And I think it's quote of the year to say that you saw your dad on TV. <laughs> what an awesome race. That battle at the start was really cool. I needed to get a better start, but uh, we went into turn one side by side. But, um, 
Yeah, so stoked to win there. Very cool. And uh, big trophy up for grabs tomorrow, and we're in the running for that. So uh, that's the goal. Enjoy the celebrations on the podium, no doubt. You will. Jamie Winkup, those first couple of laps, we certainly did enjoy them. I know you wanted to get out in front of Shane, but it was great to watch. Yeah, obviously the start was critical. Um, good start. Shane got a better one, but he uh, yeah, had a good old battle. He was pretty ballsy through the second last corner, so I thought, oh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll raise you on the last, but um, that was all good. Car's Cal, very good. Um, fantastic one-two performance. Yeah, absolutely for the team. Enjoy the podium. Chaz Mostert, I know you're probably disappointed after the first race, but to be on the podium in the second one, awesome job. Yeah, I guess we're out of the championship running, so we're, we're aiming for champagne and got some champagne today. So I'm pretty happy that the guys uh, changed the car a lot from that first race to that race then, and uh, it was a lot better. But obviously still got a lot to find on these uh, these couple of Red Bull cars at the front here, but, you know, we'll work hard off the off-season. We'll try some stuff at Homebush, and we'll see if we can narrow the gap. But super stoked with our super cheap auto 55 entry today to, to end up on the podium. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Enjoy the celebrations, Chaz. Thank you. Thanks very much. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Gartana, just grab you quickly. The number two HRT car was a bit of a mover and shaker, mate. You, uh, you know, might not be where you wanted to be, but if you qualified further up yeah. the front, that's just a little bit of advice from me. Oh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, thanks. you might have uh, moved a bit further forward. Hey, pretty pacey. Yeah, car was really good. Um, we looked after his tyres really nicely in that first race, and then we made a change, and it was probably a bit faster in that race, and looked after his tyres even better. So, sort of just waiting, biding my time, and once I knew the guys in front, the tyres were struggling, I could just get good drive and get up the inside. So um, car was pretty good. Uh, we just got to make sure to take your advice, Greg, and qualify up the front. That's encouraging though, mate. So I mean, uh, moving forward on, on that situation, clearly it's hard to pass around here, yeah. but you got through a few. Yeah, it is. It's hard to pass, um, especially on the hard tire around here. It's hard to pass, but uh, yeah, we went forward five spots. So um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, qualify closer to the front tomorrow and uh, hopefully we can race the guys up the front. What's, what is just lacking a little bit at the moment though? I mean, everyone's obviously going the same thing that usually the, the hard tyre is the rears around here at the moment that are getting such a working. Uh, what would be the bit that you want to try and increase and, or improve? Uh, for us, it's actually mid-corner turn. Yeah. So the rear of the car is pretty good. If I can get the, car, the corner squared off a bit more, then I think we can probably even look after the tyre a little bit more. So... Um, we want to give it mid-corner turn without making it too wild in the fast stuff, especially in qualifying. So um, we'll probably revert more to a, what we had in qualifying this morning for qualifying tomorrow. But I think we'll probably work with what we had in that race for the races. All right, good one. Cheers. Garth Tanner made five spots, finished in 10th position, 27 seconds behind the lead. Let's have a look at those results for you. Shane Van Gisbergen, a little over two seconds behind in the end. Jamie Wincup, Chas Mostert for Ford just under 10 seconds away uh, third position then Fabian Coulthard didn't have the pace at the back end there with rear tyres starting to go away Mark Winterbottom Will Davison Scotty McLaughlin David Reynolds Michael Caruso the best of the Nissan then Garth Tander that I just mentioned Scotty Pye Rick Kelly James Courtney and James Moffat Lowndes got to 15th Todd Kelly had more pace Waters Perkat Holdsworth and Blanchard Wood then Heimgartner Slade Pitha Shea Davies and a did not start result unfortunately for Jason Bright with all that damage on the team BOC car the podium is now set for race number 25 what an epic battle between the top three this afternoon it's time for the podium for the 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship ITM Auckland Super Sprint two big races here on Saturday winner of this one this afternoon in first place from Red Bull Racing Australia, Shane Van Gisbergen. In second position, also from Red Bull Racing Australia, another one to Jamie Wincup. Our third place driver from Super Cheap Auto Racing, Chaz Mostert. Representing our Castrol Edge winning team, Matt Cook from Red Bull Racing Australia. Great entry, Matty. All right, here's our third place trophy to be delivered by Dave Graham, ITM key customer. Another of our ITM key customers to deliver the second place trophy. We welcome Craig Bailey to hand over the Castrol Edge winning team trophy. Andrew Baker from Auckland Council Franklin. And our first place trophy this afternoon, the ITM National Sales Manager, we welcome Guy Williams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Race 25 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship ITM Auckland Super Sprint Podium. Great job from all the boys. Let's have a look at the champ points now. And it 
started out as 148 coming into the weekend. Then Jamie Winkup was the winner earlier today. He pulled it down to 142. It's back out again to 148. Shane Van Gisbergen over Jamie Winkup. Then Craig Lowndes still in third spot over Scotty McLaughlin. Wait for the catch. Got it. Well done. <laughs> and Jason Richards' trophy points with two races down in four. And... Uh, Van Gisbergen and Wind Cup with 144 points apiece with a victory each today and a second place each. And then uh, Winterbottom in position three from McLaughlin. Highlights time now. Race number 25 of our championship season for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. And this time a great conversion of pace off the start line by Shane Van Gisbergen. And a couple of drivers having to take to the grass to get the job done here. And this was an incredible first couple of laps of this race. Really breathtaking stuff. And you've got to stand and bow when you look at the way in which these guys race, and particularly for teammates to do this so closely and for there to not be tears at the end of it. The crowd was loving it. We were loving it. The Red Bull Holden side by side. Van Gisbergen and Wind Cup at it. And for Chaz Mostert, it was a huge incentive and a big opportunity. But in the end, they just had too much pace. And I wondered about the thought process going on between the ears of Roland Damon. All that was happening. and. Uh, I bet he was holding his breath on a couple of occasions. There were some really cool moves made in this race. This is Garth Panda down the inside at turn 80. He had terrific pace. It was looking after its tyres. We heard him say before they made some changes for the better and they'll keep on working on that car. There are a whole series of moments through the left-hander here at turn 10 that made us look away. This time, Lowndes over Todd Kelly. Always a cushion in this race for Van Gisbergen after the intensity of those first couple of laps. And it was a little mistake on the run to turn five for Jamie Winkup. There was no stopping Shane Van Gisbergen marching towards the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship victory of 2016. And a very big and popular win here this afternoon. So Van Gisbergen, Winkup, Mostert. We had the threat of showers. There were one or two drops and then they disappeared once again. There's still a question mark over the weather tomorrow, but we've had a couple of great races here today. And we'll do it again tomorrow for races 26 and 27. 35 laps apiece, 100 kilometres for both those races and another 150 points on the line as we work our way towards the championship finale at Sydney Olympic Park. Hope you can join us again tomorrow. What an unbelievable race. Uh, one, two, once again for Red Bull Racing Australia. We could see all of the, the team there elated, celebrating this wonderful moment. And for Shane, this is an absolute career highlight.